From beautiful Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri, tonight the Pittsburgh Pirates take on the defending American League champion Kansas City Royals. The Pirates' two-city, six-game road trip continues. It's back to interleague play, and we take a look at the standings in the National League Central Division. The Pirates lost a couple of games in those standings after being swept against the Milwaukee Brewers at Miller Park, so they're four and a half back against the Redbirds. Greg Brown along with Bob Walk and Bob, more bad news yesterday because the Pirates lost another very important piece. They're starting shortstop Jordy Mercer with the injured left knee, so they've got Mercer out, Josh Harrison out for a time. They're going to have to find a way to get it done yes they are you know and greg no team really ever gets to a year where they're going to have to cover for some injuries but these are some p- pretty big ones and as you can see uh, by looking at the screen right now they're going to last a while jordy's going to be out probably six weeks five more for jay hay so there are going to have to be uh, either some guys who really step up and uh, and and can in- increase their offensive output uh, quite a bit more than what we saw in the first half, or they're going to have to maybe make some changes, uh, maybe bring in somebody, say, to play shortstop for a while. So it's going to be an interesting situation to see how the Pirates handle this. It's our Allegheny Health Network injury update. In the meantime, the Pirates do fill a spot uh, on the roster, not to suggest that Brent Morell is going to be the long-term solution, but he is here up from AAA Indianapolis. We saw him a little bit last season and uh, transferred to the 60-day DL Corey Hart. So there are a lot of moving parts in all this. Meanwhile, the Pirates have to concentrate on the task at hand. That is trying to find a way to beat one of the very best teams in all of baseball, the Kansas City Royals. So the Pirates uh, have that in front of them, and they'll look to find a way to do just that, Bob. Uh, it, this is the first bit of real adversity this club has faced, and I think Clint Hurdle uh, kind of made the club aware of that early on, that, that injuries are going to happen, and now again, they're facing those injuries. It certainly is going to be a tester, and what happens anytime you get adversity, what do you look to to kind of smooth things out and help you out? It's the starting pitching. Starting pitching is going to have to be at the best. Uh, hopefully we get the right guy on the mound uh, this evening. I think we do. Well, he certainly has had plenty of rest. Talking about A.J. Burnett, it's been a while since we've seen him on the mound. He has good career numbers against the Kansas City Royals. He looks to be a Royal stopper tonight from Kansas City as the Pirates and Royals meet. Coming up next.
very pleasant night for baseball here. The Pirates return to Kansas City for the first time since 2006. A.J. Burnett has pitched here before. Member of the Yankees and the Toronto Blue Jays, of course. And we take a look at this uh, matchup between the veteran A.J. Burnett and Giordano Ventura this season in 13 starts. Ventura's 4-6 and six this season. Burnett 7-3 and three with a 2-11 ERA. Bob, just hope that that long layoff. Actually, both guys have not pitched in a while. Well, it's going to be an interesting matchup uh, you know, between the, uh, Ventura, who is uh, really kind of a power guy, going to try and throw fastball by people, and A.J., who's kind of reinvented himself as more of a, a pitcher type where the control is very important to him, hitting the outside corner. Uh, setting up that good curveball of his. So it's a nice matchup. Be fun to watch. We'll be watching A.J. Burnett and Jordano Ventura as he makes his way into the dugout. We'll be coming back here momentarily, but right now we'll go back to the studio. Rob King in a State Farm game break. the field behind Jordano Ventura in the first of this three game series at beautiful Kauffman Stadium expecting some 35,000 fans in this 38,000 seat jewel of a ballpark and the Pirates hoping to bounce back after a less than satisfactory three game series in Milwaukee we check out the starting lineup tonight for the Pirates and it is brought to you by Toyota. Gregory Polanco leads off. Neil Walker hits second. Andrew McCutcheon had the day off yesterday. He hits third. Then it's Starling Marte and left. Jung Ho Gong is at shortstop. The DH is Pedro Alvarez. Francisco Savelli behind the plate. Travis Ishikawa starts his second straight game at first. And over at third base, it's Sean Rodriguez. Take a look at uh, Ventura's numbers uh, on the season. Uh, the type of pitcher he is, he's just a, a, a real hard thrower. He got a curveball and a pretty decent changeup. But 
his fastball velocities will be up there about what we see from Cole normally. So the uh, the Buckles are going to have to have their uh, fastball hitting shoes on to catch up to his heater. Ventura, an outstanding rookie season last year, turned 24 years old just last month. Last season went 14 and 10 with a 3.20 ERA. Spent a little bit of time on the disabled list this season. Check out the defense brought to you by Honda, and it is Gerard Dyson in left with Lorenzo Kane in center. Alex Rios is in right. Mike Moustakis, Eric Hosmer on the corners. Alcides Escobar is the shortstop with Omar Infante at second, and one of the best young catchers behind the plate, Salvador Perez. And here is Gregory Polanco. Underway with a strike, home plate umpire Phil Cuzzy. Polanco, a five-game hitting streak going. Ball on a strike, 24 walks for Ventura in 72 innings. There's Phil Cuzzy, Jerry Davis at first, Tony Randazzo at second, Will Little at third, Jerry Davis the crew chief. And a little flare to the shortstop, Escobar. Soft liner, retires Polanco. We're underway, 86 degrees at game time here in Kansas City. Ventura 4 and 6 on the year, now faces Neil Walker, who has a nine game hitting streak. And a double in the eighth inning. Yesterday to extend the streak also nearly hit a home run in his third at bat in Milwaukee. It was 97. Talk about that heater. One ball and one strike. You know when you're uh, facing a guy that you really haven't uh, seen much or anything of. Uh, the, the first few pitches or the first at bat, you're learning some stuff. You're you're seeing things for the first time. This ball is lifted uh, lazily out the left field, but after that, you immediately know that he's like other guys you have faced, and in your mind, you, you match him up, and, and then it's okay. Check out tonight's Barrel Automotive League leaders, the active players, with the highest career on base percentage in interleague games, and Andrew McCutcheon at 4.13. Best. So should be well rested. Getting that day off yesterday in the 6 1 loss to Milwaukee. Gunshin currently fifth in the league in on base percentage this season. 100 from Ventura. I take that back. We're not facing guys that start and throw 100. But the, generally, I am being serious. It, 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 I'm sure that by the third inning, they've all talked about who he's like as far as pitchers in the National League that they see more often. One and two at 99. 99, and uh, what exactly down the middle? Put right on the outside corner. Hello, one, two, three. For Roberto Ventura, AJ Burnett takes the hill.
And sure, now we go to the bottom of the first inning here in Kansas City. The Pirates taking on the top club in the American League Central Division. They're six up on the Twins of these Royals. This is Ned Yost's lineup. Alcides Escobar will be followed by Mike Moustakas and then Lorenzo Cain, who has an eight-game hitting streak. Eric Hosmer is the cleanup man. Kendrys Morales, the veteran switch hitter, is the DH. Salvador Perez is the catcher. It's Omar Infante at second. Alex Rios in right. And Gerard Dyson is the left fielder. Take a look at AJ's numbers brought to you by Hyundai. And uh, obviously they're very good. They're all-star team numbers. ERA at 211. And only 33 walks and 100 strikeouts. That's been uh, really a, I think, the main story with AJ. I'm sure you agree, Greg, that the base on ball numbers cutting him way back from where he was last year. His control uh, just been absolutely perfect. Really able to spot that fastball to that first base side of home plate. And they're going to slide out there right away. See Cervalli set up on that outside corner. And right away up the middle a base hit for Escobar. Did not get that ball out there. Good control wasn't there on that pitch. Rivers Casino tips to win. A turn both pages Greg not only the page that uh, was the last three games you know forget about that stuff that went on in Milwaukee. Uh, but also the page from the St. Louis series. You know that. There is no momentum. Nothing that happened back then can help you or do anything to you. The Kansas City Royals are in front of you. Worry about them. I mean, that's the, the big thing. While well, taking off right away in a tremendous jump, Escobar swipes his seventh base. That was no contest. No, that wasn't. That's one of the things that we've always talked about with AJ that uh, he can be very slow to home plate. He's got that big leg kick, and uh, it gives the. Uh, the team with speed in Kansas City definitely one of those. A great opportunity to try to add 90 feet. Now Mustakis with a chance to at least move him. Oh, he will move him to third and score him. Two batters into the game. It is one nothing. Marte a long throw and a good throw, and they will get him. Darling Marte hustling toward the line throws out Mustakas who gets the RBI to give the Royals the early one nothing lead. And Mustakas got to be extremely surprised that he was out that easy at second base. Hey, watch where this ball goes. It's ground ball right down the line. I mean that's a double every time. Well not with Marte. Come up and he put a one hopper right there on the money. Nice quick tag by Walker. He went to the bare hand. Like a third baseman making that play. A one nothing ball game. Here's Lorenzo Kane. The Royals make things happen fast. Yeah. Uh, waiting around up there at the plate. Another uh, miss with a, uh, a pitch. So Mustakis going the other way. Thrown out easily by Marte. Now the thing that we saw with that last pitch, or the first pitch, where it ran inside, we, uh, it, it's just not where AJ is wanting to throw that ball, and that's uh, not uh, AJ like this season. Well, it's been nine days. So. And the, the last thing that we were talking about there on our tips, as balls popped up, was will the layoff affect the control? To this point, he's not been pinpoint with that fastball. Now that doesn't mean it won't come after he's been out there for maybe a dozen pitches or so. But the, the, the fastballs that are supposed to be outside, they've all been drifting over the heart of the plate, actually drifting almost inside to the right hand hitters. Now Eric Hosmer, first baseman, 293 average. Seven RBIs. And bounced. Here's Gung. Oh, not able to make that play, and Walker not able to save him. So, an error on Gung.
tip of the glove. Sounds like a broken record when we talk about the uh, the defense, the errors, the plays that aren't made. But I guess until it gets cleaned up, we have to keep talking about it. And we face a team some are considering maybe the best in baseball, maybe even better right now than the Cardinals and these Kansas City Royals cannot afford to do it. Here's Kendrys Morales. But here's the thing, Greg. I mean, the, the Pirates are where they're at because of their pitching. The offense has just been okay. So you need to have a, the best defense you can to support the strength of your team, which is the pitching, especially that starting pitch. Well, really the pitching all through, all up and down. The, the bullpen's been great. You know, the, the pitching staff needs a defense to support them. And uh, not quite where we want to be in that regard. And it's a, you know, with Mercer being out, it's going to be even more difficult now. Again, it does make you wonder. I mean, for now, Gung is there at shortstop, but you know, these are the type of things that, no question, Neil Huntington and Clint Hurdle have been talking about even before the Mercer injury. When Harrison went down, you know, it, it created a void, even though they do have decent depth. I'm sure they were thinking about, even before yesterday, what happens if Mercer goes down? They have to have a backup. Backup plan. So we'll see what they decide to do. For now, it's Gung at shortstop. Dorsey was a, a shortstop in Korea. He said it was more of an adjustment to move to third. One ball, one strike, two outs. And Kendrys Morales. And again, to the right side. And this time, Sean Rodriguez over there makes the play. One nothing, Kansas City. Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Toyota. Toyota helps you get the most out of your drive. Just ask a friend who drives one. Toyota, let's go places. And by Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. Let's go Bucks. Royals get one in the first. And this is the first of a three-game series. These two clubs have played 26 times since the inception of interleague play, and they're 13 and 13. Harrison on the bench that wrapped hand and the thumb surgery. We're talking about Ventura, I think. Not the city in California, you know. No. Here's Sterling Marte. I'm sure it was dazzling in that first inning. This is a guy who hasn't pitched in 11 days since he went five innings against Tampa Bay. On the ninth, 
Gave up three runs on four hits. He appears to be very strong. Yes, he does. And the other way in a base hit on the 100 miles per hour of Marte singles to start the second. Marte just kind of flicking this ball out the, uh, the other direction 100 on the black. It's amazing how guys with the big fastball will throw outside isn't it? Yeah. Yeah you talked about that that is. Now if that was on the inside how, how was he going to catch up to it? No chance. It would have saw him off. Jung Ho Gong. What will Marte do here? So there's going to be a challenge for him to try and steal off this guy. They have not been running on Ventura, and anybody that tries to run on Perez usually doesn't make it. We just uh, had a visit in the booth from a former Pirates catcher, Jason Kendall, who works with the Kansas City Royals players, in particular the catchers and Perez. Looked good, didn't he? He did happy, look good. He yeah. looked happy. He uh, looks relaxed. Raising his kids here in Kansas City. Hopefully, Two yeah. young children. Hopefully tomorrow we can have a longer chat. Yeah. yeah. See how he's doing. He just stepped in here just before we went on the air. One ball, one strike. But he did say he likes this uh, Salvador Perez, and, and uh, the the Royals, in essence, have entrusted Kendall with uh, taking Perez under his wing. Teaching him the nuances of that position. Ned Yost, the skipper of these Royals. Well, I couldn't have a better uh, you know, teacher as far as the, the catching position than, than Kendall. But present, better not be shy or, or be upset if somebody gets in his face. Yeah. <laughs> Kendall will do he that. Will do that. He, right. will, he will let him know what he thinks. Out. There's all that rides in on Young, and now a three and one. Marte low bluff start. Shut down in the scramble back. I thought it was a bluff start. It was just a, a start and a fall. I'm laughing about it a little bit. Marte has the hardest time, I think, of any base dealer I've ever seen with that initial push when he. Leaves. It's always slipping. There's a liner in the left. That was 97 miles per hour, so it's first and second. And nobody out, and Pedro Alvarez will come to the plate. And you know, when you throw hard, you still have to get something else over the plate. I'm able to sit on that 97 mile an hour fastball with a 3 1 count. Young now a little seven game hitting streak and again he will be uh, for now starting every day at shortstop we'll see how this all plays out. Pedro Alvarez will come to the plate. Marte at second gong at first. Sat yesterday as uh, his glove and his bat have, as the Pirates say, been challenged. Well, an opportunity to DH maybe this whole series. 2 0. Oh. Ventura looked, and it's still awfully early, but that first inning just a uh, Unhittable. I mean, yeah. just unbelievable. As good as we've seen a, a starter go in the first, but here a little stumble in the second himself. Well, Marte and Gong and not comes down to control. Yeah, it, it, you know, stuff is great, but there's a lot of guys that never get out of the minor leagues that throw awfully hard. 
but have no idea where it's going. Can't get an off-speed pitch over the plate. And that's going to be sneaking into left field to allow Marte to score. So Alvarez, an opposite field single, ties the game at one. Much like that Moustakas hit the other way. Alvarez ties it at one, bringing home Marte. Right through the hole. You, you get in the fastball counts, but a guy that throws hard, you know you're going to get one. And Look, Greg, where does he throw his fa big fastball? Throw it away, huh? They set up outside, throw it outside. And that's where you hit it. That's where you catch up to it. Now, if you're not, have, if you don't have an overpowering fastball, I mean, you have to you know, be able to hit corners both sides. But, but I mean, if you're throwing a ball uh, up to three digits, up to 100 miles an hour, right there, you see, now that yep. was a mistake. Perez is set up on the outside corner. He missed. He, he that missed badly. his spot by that much by th three feet. He's trying to throw this on the outside corner at the knees. Look where the target is and look where the ball was caught. That's about uh, maybe two and a half feet. One ball one strike. Same thing again. Prez hops. You saw him hop outside. Outside target. Pitch inside corner. Setting up away. Got hook. That's a hard curveball too. 85 mile an hour. Straight down. Ventura has had some early inning troubles this season. There's a couple of innings. Opponents hit 314 against him. After the second, he has really settled down. And bounced into center field. And Gung is going to be held. No, the ball gets off of Kane. And now stumbling around second, Alvarez holds. It's 2 1 Pirates. That was wild. Young initially held up at third, but then Kane has it skip up and hit him. Doesn't field it cleanly. And the Pirates take a 2-1 lead. Well, it's an unpredictable game, isn't huh. it? You can say that again. I looked up and saw his chin start to come up. But Young definitely was uh, stopping at third base. Alvarez stumbled around second. Dave Island, the pitching coach, with a quick visit to the mound. So an error on Kane, who has been, in fact, this defense. Uh, the Royals, people that have watched this team all year and going back to last season, say it's as good as it gets. Yeah, he's a, uh, his scouting report is a, a very much an elite defender. Will catch everything. He plays it. An incredibly shallow outfield. Oh, and they give Travis Ishikawa all of right center field, all he wants. Look at that. Ishikawa, of course. How shallow Kane is in center oh field. Oh my gosh. He's almost playing behind short. This hit the other way and deep. Dyson back to the wall and off the top of the wall. This will score two. Ishikawa at second base with a double. And the Pirates lead four to one. Well, we, we saw Ishikawa hit that same ball about three times in, uh, in Milwaukee. He kept driving the ball deep to left field, and they're playing him real cheap here. Now, if you're playing deeper, obviously you're not going to catch this ball off the top of the wall. But you're back there earlier, so you have time to see. I'm not going to catch this. I'm going to lay off the wall and get the rebound. But when he's so shallow, he's got to go back there on the dead sprint and looks where look where he finally put the brakes on, right next to the wall. Ball bounces, comes off of him. Everybody scores. Ishikawa easily, easily gets into second base. Clint Hurdle wants uh, Phil Cuzzy and the umpire crew here to at least discuss. Whether that ball could have been actually 
maybe he's thinking it hit a seat or something behind that fence. But you see it hits the fence. It doesn't go over it. Well, that fan reached out. Maybe that's what he's talking about, too. Is yeah, it worth the replay? He's, he's talking about the fan, probably. They're going to discuss it and maybe decide whether they want to at least take a look at it. Well, you know what I mean about playing yeah, shallow? It doesn't, you're playing shallow like that, I mean, it, you're playing your percentages. You're thinking, okay, I'm going to take away a little base hit, a little blooper in front. But when a ball is hit deep like that, it allows you to it, know. Yeah, it, I've got no chance. Right. He couldn't have caught that if he was playing deeper, but he wouldn't have been standing in such a bad spot when it did hit the fence. He would have recognized immediately that is going to be either a home run or off the top of the fence. He'd lay back in the grass a little bit and, and at least save a run. Probably could have saved a run yeah. there, but Gerard Dyson taking a look at the big video board there are pros and cons about playing a deep outfield or a shallow outfield and that was an example of what happens sometimes you get burnt playing real shallow will little the third base umpire and the crew chief there jerry davis will little on your left number 93 jerry davis on your right this is just a a crew chief review this is not a challenge they just want to make Watch sure they're reaching out it might have touched his fingers, but he's reaching over the. He's reaching yeah. over the fence. I, I don't think they'll call it a home run. I don't think they'll change anything. Uh, the only thing they could do is uh, send. Uh, yeah, back to third. Back. Yeah, which would be bad. Yeah, wouldn't well, that be? Yeah. Wouldn't that be something? Clint Hurdle comes out, asks them to review, and they send Cervelli back to third. Let's hope it's not what happens. But I, it's a possibility that it could have gone off that guy's fingertips. As he was reaching over the fence. So everything, everything stays, stays as it is. Same, yeah. Ed Yost and uh, Rusty Koontz checking with Jerry Davis. Rusty Koontz, the base running and outfield instructor, of course, a former Pirates first base coach. not quite as red as it was. Is it? Yeah, it's blonde. A little redder, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe, maybe a bit. But now, Sean Rodriguez. Rodriguez, a tough time of it in Milwaukee. He's 0 for his last nine at bats. Jordy Mercer got hurt in the second inning. Rodriguez came on to play third base. And that's when Gong moved to short. And now he is in the hole 0 and 2. Had a great chance to bring in the first run of the game in the fifth inning yesterday with a runner at third, Jeff Decker, and just one out in the infield end, but he popped up to the infield. And then Jeff Locke followed, and it was Locke who delivered the RBI to give the Pirates a 1 0 lead, but they lost 6 to 1. As the Brewers scored two in the seventh and four in the eighth. All fouled away, stays 0-2 on Sean Rodriguez. No stranger to the Royals. A lot of years in the American League. Most recently with Tampa Bay. One ball and two strikes. Uh, A.J. Burnett will not be hitting in this game. Last game he pitched against the Cardinals previous weekend at PNC Park he homered AJ was, uh, AJ was asked what league he likes best American National he said uh, yeah, it's not that Big of a difference, doesn't really care, but he goes, but I do like to hit. Ventura strikes out Rodriguez for the first out. Jeff Locke likes to hit. He also drew a walk in yesterday's game. What did Locke tell you that uh, oh, I asked the him reason him. he pitched yesterday? So well, how come you're pitching in Milwaukee on Sunday and talk about the rotation being Reordered after the All-Star break, he said, because they want me to hit. 
don't, don't want to lose his bat yeah. to DH. Yeah, that's good thinking. <laughs> okay. What AJ heard him say that. <laughs> Shikawa, the uh, opposite field two run double. Now Polanco. With a soft liner to short his first time up. Ishikawa hit uh, 231 against the Royals in the World Series as a member of the Giants. 13 at bats, 3 out of 13. A postseason hero for San Francisco. Come on, boy. Two and one now. All started with the opposite field single by Marte, then Gong, a base hit to left. Alvarez drove in a run with a base hit to left. Cervelli singled up the middle and the Ishikawa double. Nice going to run out of room. Renzo Kane. He's still thinking about that. All that hit off his glove. Didn't really change it. No, it's up, not mattering, right? Yeah. Ball off the wall. Put it in the end of that. Hang it in there. 99. Polanco has been getting on base. He's reached 12 of his uh, last 15 games. Five game hitting streak as it's safely in nine of his last ten. He's also walked a bunch recently. He's uh, tied for third in the majors along with Manny Machado of the Orioles with 11 walks this month of July trailing only Andrew McCutcheon and Bryce Harper. McCutcheon has walked 13 times Harper a dozen. You see Ventura who breezed through that first innings now. Throwing 28 pitches this inning. And we probably don't have to tell you about the Royals bullpen. Strike three. Polanco thought it was ball four. Now that's right on the inside corner. That's yep. a good pitch. Get some looking. Third strikeout for your Ben Ventura. See what that 98 mile an hour fastball does on the inside corner? As opposed to being away. You know, Walker, the eighth man to hit in the inning. Now bounce to the shortstop, Escobar. That'll do it, but the Pirates score four times. Top of the second, starting Marte got it going. Jung Ho Gung followed. Cervelli and Alvarez. And it's 4 1 Bucks.
Pirates lead 4-1, go to the bottom of the second. Score four times, and eight men to the plate. Now A.J. Burnett with a lead. This is Salvador Perez, the sixth man in the order. Hitting 253 with 15 homers. When you're starting, there's always innings that end up being more important than others for you know, all kinds of different reasons. Well, this is one of them. You gave up a run in the first. Your team went out there and uh, put up a, a nice big number, a four spot. Now you got to try and get back to that dugout as quick as you can. Lead off single. Brings up Omar Infante. Follow your 2015 Pirates All-Stars to Cincinnati for the 2015 Midsummer Classic on a special inside edition of Inside Pirates Baseball. Go behind the scenes with McCutcheon, Burnett, Melanson, and Cole as they partake in this year's All-Star festivities on Inside Pirates Baseball, Kings of Queen City, Friday after postgame on Route Sports. McCutcheon played in the All-Star game, as did uh, Melanson and Cole. Burnett did not. wanted to uh, I think more than anything else arrange the rotation this way they talked about how they I think the phrasing was honor Burnett's days off as to why he didn't pitch earlier that ball hit hard to left and Perez is going to be held at third on the double by Infante well obviously the, the Royals aren't uh Aren't going to go away just because we had a four-run in inning. Uh, they're not uh, they're really the best team in the American League uh, for nothing. And again, uh, the control is just not there for AJ. I mean, you know, I'm not talking about walking people. Obviously, I'm talking about being able to paint that fastball away. Uh, normally, Cervelli hardly ever has to even move his glove when he sits up on the outside corner. And, and AJ will throw that two seamer out there where it'll start off the plate and come back in. And, I mean, he's deadly with that, like probably eight out of ten times. Today, it's not doing that. It's drifting. It, it's coming back, but it's coming right back over the inside half of the plate. the pitch right there. That's the one we're talking about where he has been so good with that all year long. Two seamer starts away and then you see it move back. It's a call there. But if you're nailing that time after time, you're going to get those calls, at least half of them. Two and one. Check with Jerry Davis. No swing. Infield back, nobody out. Second and third. Alex Rios, two homers, 14 RBIs. It's ball three. Hundred strikeouts on the year. He's facing the Royals for the 12th time in his career. And Ventura is probably pretty close you know, as far as the way he throws his stuff wise as to what AJ was like probably 15 years ago. And then now AJ that at bat. That's the first time he's pitched basically like himself. But all those fastballs right in that same spot. Saying that with Ventura, you know how he's just trying to overpower people. He's letting it fly. The ball's running all over the place. It doesn't really, you know, there's no like trying to pitch, so to speak. And even when he is trying to pitch, he's not putting it where he wants to. Well, that's kind of how AJ was, you know, back then. Real hard curveball with a 98 mile an hour fastball. 
throwing no hitters while he's walking five or six. I mean that that was that was him. Now he's all about control. He's all about doing this. Throwing that fastball to that first base side of the plate. The two seam fastball. That first side of the plate. His ooh, his glove side. He hits. Dyson. And loads them up. Control still not there yet. That, that's another example. I mean, how many times have you really seen AJ throw a fastball that far inside to a left hand? He might come in there with a curveball, hit somebody in the leg, but very seldom with a fastball. See the Pirates now leading the majors in that category, hit by a pitch. Kansas City is second. Pirates hit and they get hit. Now I see this Escobar. He singled and scored in the first inning. And that has gotten his fair share of ground balls and double plays. Very fast infield here is the bomb. Well, Sean can run a little bit. Walker's no, got I, average speed. I, I'm at the. Uh, I know. The okay. oh. <laughs> I know you do. And I know you're waiting. <laughs> Thinking. How can I respond to that? Oh, and two. Maybe not like the artificial turf. Yeah, I was going to say it's you not, were not as fast as he used to be when it was just a carpet. When Bob pitched here in the 1980 World Series, can you believe didn't pitch this? in this ballpark? You didn't. Did well, your team on the Ventura. But your team, you were here. Yeah, yeah, we were here. The absolutely different look to the outfield. Stands are pretty much the same, but the outfield, uh, boy, they have done a lot here. One zero oh and two count now on Escobar. Just reaches out. Gets a piece of it. It really was one of the jewel ballparks of the time. You know, when it was built. When I saw in '80, it was uh, only five, six years old, and it was just gorgeous, and it still is. One of the nicest places in, in the country to come see a ball game. Great, great ballpark. They've done a lot with that. Outfield used to just be a, used to play grass banquets and fountains. That was it. One and two. Escobar with 33 RBIs. And caught by Gunn. Timed it perfectly. And out number two. Yeah, that was a great job of waiting, basically, and not getting up in the air too soon. It's not hit very hard. But he had to wait, and as you said, Greg, timed it perfectly. Great read off the bat to know the speed of that ball. Jung Ho Gong. Two outs now. Mustakis, and how big would this be for Burnett and the Pirates? Stock has hit the uh, ball inside the third base bag for an RBI single last inning and then was thrown out by Marte trying to go to second. Fly ball to center field, McCutcheon has it measured. So A.J. Burnett walks the tightrope. Second and third, nobody out. They do not score.
right now, 4-1 Pirates as we hit the third inning in beautiful ballpark here in Kansas City. The Pirates haven't played here since 2006, and they were swept in a three-game series, and that wasn't exactly a battle of World Series contenders, and that was kind of a theme for these two franchises when you look at the last couple decades, and then some from 93 to 2012, they were 29th and 30th respectively in win percentage. But look at them the last two plus seasons, we're talking about third and fifth. Now, manager Clint Hurdle said it's a great thing for baseball to two, uh, see two middle market teams succeeding like this, and there's a lot of interesting parallels. Hurdle noted that both teams lost pretty much a generation of fans, the Pirates and the Royals, with all their losing ways for a couple decades, but both have been able to reconnect. And Greg and Bob, just take a look around this ballpark right now. It is darn near sold out on a Monday night in mid-July here in Kansas City. What a turnaround for both these franchises, and a lot of fun for baseball fans to watch. And, Bob, you know, some people have talked about this, uh, possi the, the possibility that this could be a World Series preview. They've been talking about that for a few months. Well, the place is packed on a Monday night. Like Robbie said, it's amazing that uh, what a marketing campaign winning is. Isn't it? Yeah, it really is. <laughs> yeah. They are all over this place. A lot of, uh, they, a lot of people standing and out that, that great outfield area now they have. Two balls, one strike on. Andrew McCutcheon. Two thousand fourteen American League champions. Turning to the yeah, postseason. It's, it's not hard to get here either from Pittsburgh. It's just down seventy. <laughs> it's a breeze. It's right, it's right, right. Yeah, you, yeah, you can just pull you, off. Well, you, can, you can see seventy yeah. right out there beyond the outfield. Uh, it's just right there. It goes right by. Yep. So just get on seventy. Come on down. Need a map, straight shot. Waiting a little bit, maybe for uh, Salvador Perez. We're getting into the box. They get nicked up. There's a 100 miles an hour on the hands, and see how it's hard even just to foul it off. That ball's out over the plate. Kutch has a much better chance of getting ahead of the bat to the baseball. How's that one off? But a little bit out over the plate, not on the outside half, but still moved out a little bit further. But when you think about it, just picture yourself in a batter's box and the different locations of that baseball. You have a bat in your hand, you get the head of the bat. If the ball's going 100 mile an hour, you, you want it. Uh, you know, obviously not too far away where you can't reach it, but you don't want to write right in next to you. How are you ever going to get the head of the bat to that? Sure. Outstanding in the postseason. One game, six of the World Series, seven shutout innings. First Royals rookie. Ever to win a World Series game. Taking a little bit of time, so Phil Cuzzy said, Come on, let's go. And a base hit for McCutcheon. Now standing at bat. Got it to three and two. Singles to left. It went off speed pitch. Park University tweets talking about this uh, pirate offense. You can send us a message. Hashtag Bucks Booth. Uh, get Ishi with it. Travis Ishikawa with the double off the wall and left to score two. But Marte got it going. That single to right field, leading off the second. Pages, both of them. Yeah, good and the bad. Then her likes to say shower well. That means not just after tough losses, but even after big wins. Move on. This is 
nice as last weekend was in Pittsburgh, winning three straight to get to within two and a half. And the Cardinals, two of them in dramatic walk-off fashion and extra innings. Can't dwell on those. You know, Greg, the, there's always that chance you might be looking too far ahead at a big series or something, and, and and that can be a problem in the series you're actually in. But it can also be to where you're still reliving the the great yeah. series you just had. Yeah. You know, it, you gotta maybe just take an hour or so to pat your back after the game, but don't be doing it for the next couple days. Well, it's unlike any other sport because yeah. the other sports you can dwell for a day, two, football a week, and you know. Enjoy maybe a, a big win for a whole week. Whatever it is, good or bad. Okay, it's over with the next day. And there's no momentum. Right. Still on two on Marte, and he grounds a single to left field. At 98 miles per hour. First and second, and nobody out. <laughs> and Jerry's going like, wait a second. Yeah, here. it is. Wait. Now that wasn't really that bad of a spot either. One of the, the worst places for Marte is up and in. And that's probably his weakest batting average as far as if you you cut the strike zone up into into sections. And that 98 it wasn't really all that much up, but above the belt inside half, and Marte able to uh, hit it hard enough to pull it in that hole. That fast infield Bob was talking about a moment yeah, ago. Yeah. Ground balls and shoot right through this infield. Jung Ho Gong now. Takes ball one. So this is a this is a fast info. I don't know. Oh, I'm just watching. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> just the first couple of innings. I guess it's kind of like those West Coast infields, right? Well, they're a uh, bent grass. And uh, like the, the, we got Kentucky bluegrass at PNC Park, and it just grows a little more lodged, a little thicker. Plus, you can't cut it as short. It doesn't stay as healthy if you cut it as short as the bent grass. So it, it is a little slower infield. Oh, whatever this grass is, I'm not sure. I'd have to go down and uh, uh, taste it and take a little piece. I've seen you do that in just about every ballpark. Yeah, that's how I tell what kind it is. Two and one. Chris Medlin, who has not pitched in the big leagues in a couple of years, the former Brave, just activated today. Loosens in the bullpen for the Royals. Two and one. Young with 30 RBIs. Two men on here and nobody out. Plays off. Nope. I didn't see any intent there. Nor did Jerry Davis. Full count. And now they're loaded. For Pedro Alvarez. And almost getting close to 60 pitches now, 58. And once again, Dave Island will make a trip to the mound. Our day automotive this day in Pirates history, July 20th, 2010. Pirates put up a nine spot in the first inning against the Brewers. Pedro Alvarez in his first career grand slam. Also added a solo shot in the second inning, his first multi homer game of his career. Pirates. Went on to beat the Brewers 11 9. Ken Maka was the manager of the Brewers that time. He's going to join Rob King for the Pirates post game tonight after the game. Dave Island, second trip to the mound in this game. And they're loaded for Alvarez here. He singled in a run in the second.
Alvarez fouls it off. Two career grand slams. Oh, and one on Alvarez. McCutcheon, Marte, and Gung on the bases. And he could not hold up, and now Alvarez in the hole, 0 and 2. Mistake pitch and Pedro came up em empty. You see, he couldn't hold up on that real good curveball down and in, but then he, he just hung one right down the middle on 0 2 count, which is a big no no most of the time. But Pedro couldn't, uh, couldn't get to it. Here is Cervelli. He had an RBI single to center field his first time up. RBIs now for Cervelli. And a ball and a strike. Dano Ventura Just had to really work the last two innings. Medlin. So he's about ready. Cervelli could maybe deliver a knockout punch. Two and one. Hey, you would think a hit or a walk in showers. Oh, nice play at first base by Hosmer. To the plate for one and to first. No, they don't get the double play. Hosmer went way up there. Ill advised cutoff. Ventura, if he doesn't make the catch, he just might get the double play. There must have been a lot, kind of a lack of communication going on there because there was no reason to catch this. Unless uh, Ventura thought he wasn't at first. Hosmer says, My fault there. Well, Hosmer, he, he didn't say anything to him then. He probably yeah. should have, well, he should have. Not, there's no probably about it. He should have yelled at him, I got the back. And then Ventura is nowhere near the play. He stops and lets the first baseman do his job. But, I mean, if he doesn't know that he's gone back to the back, then he's got to run over there and. I mean, he can't just let the ball go and say, "Oh, I hope someone's behind me." So, if Hosmer didn't say anything, then it was his bad. He's got to tell his pitcher that he's there. Yes, he went. Says the home plate umpire, Phil Cuzzy. It's 0-2. Another look. Ventura waited to. Uh, I mean, you know, maybe I think Hosmer almost saying that's my ball. Maybe there, Bob. Maybe was saying my. Maybe he's saying that's I, mine. I, I don't know. Could have. But whatever happened there, I mean, that's the way it should have happened. Yeah. First baseman has to call him off. Well, the Pirates, after all that, don't get anything. Bunch of base runners, no runs, but leading it 4-1.
Pirates Baseball on Route Sports is brought to you by the Chevy Trax and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go Bucks. 4-1 Pirates lead the Royals. Going to the bottom of the third inning. 3-4-5 men in the order against A.J. Burnett. It's the first of three against the Royals. As the Pirates return to Kauffman Stadium for the first time since 2006. Ball one on Lorenzo Cain. He popped the short his first time up. Coming off a big game yesterday against the White Sox. Home run off Chris Sale. Last eight games. Four homers. 15 hits. Gong. Ball took a hop on him. He stayed with it and got Kane. That one came real close to getting away. We want to see your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag hit data strong fan. And you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. It's brought to you by T-Mobile. It's your strongest fan photos in. Brought to you by T-Mobile. Bucko fans on hand here. Bucko fan needs to get more sleep. On the count on Eric Hosmer. So you listen to Bobby drove all night on I-70 to get here. Is see. it that far? I just assume when I saw I-70, I assume we were close. Yeah. I know it's past wheeling a little bit. I have to talk to Hosmer about his ties to Pittsburgh. His mom defected from Cuba at the age of seven, and her family for a time lived in Pittsburgh. Just a short drive up here. Yeah. Let's see. Let's get on I-70. Yeah. Eric Hosmer. First round pick and third overall in 2008. Hosmer. After the same round, Pedro Alvarez was drafted just before the Royals selected Hosmer. He goes down swinging. Well, there's really some swings in this game as far as the, the success either pitcher is having. They both have you know, they've been looking like they're in trouble at times and And then they come up with some great pitches and they make the hitters look bad. So far, AJ has got the advantage, uh, big advantage on that scoreboard. If AJ can settle in and get in a, a little bit of a groove, it might really pay off big with his. With the scoreboard looking the way it is right now. One, two, three, go the Royals.
back at the best stories from the Pirates' first half of 2015. Relive the most memorable moments, inside stories, and top plays so far this season on the best of Inside Pirates Baseball, presented by Allegheny Health Network tonight after post-game on Root Sports. 4-1 Pirates here, go to the fourth. Kauffman Stadium. Kansas City. Now you're looking at those uh, new seats that they put in uh, a few years back out in the outfield. Field seating whatsoever here. We've got a Hall of Fame, big Hall of Fame building out there now. Gorgeous ballpark, as we said earlier. Named after the former Royals owner, Ewing Kaufman. As Rodriguez, who struck out in the second. There's that Hall of Fame yeah. uh, is out there beyond, just past the left field foul pole. George Brett, uh, Dick Hauser, Frank White, retired. Uniform numbers as Sean Rodriguez strikes out again, and that's number six for Ventura. And of course, there's a former Royal, former number one pick, 1975, Len Hurdle. He is back in Kansas City, where he played a few years with the Royals. Of course, was part of that 1980 World Series team against Bob Walks Phillies. Win hurdle. It's 417 in that series. 1980. 5 for 12. Yeah, he was, big leagues in 1977. Clint was a, a, quite a phenom at that time. Kind of like uh, the, the Royals version of uh, Polanco right now. I mean, had all the tools. Polanco 0 for 2 in this game. Saw Clint uh, talking to a lot of people just before the game back behind the dugout area. Signing some autographs. And they still remember him. For sure. He was the hitting coach for the Texas Rangers in 2010. And so the Rangers came here a couple of times that year. And that is a fair ball inside the bag. Polanco will have at least two. And Alex Rios gets to it cleanly. And Polanco with a six game hitting streak, a one out double. mentioned in the open about you know, one of the things that uh, you know, might help out cover up some of the injuries we have if somebody one individual or maybe a couple individuals really up their offensive game from what they did in the first half Blanco definitely a, uh, a candidate for that just mentioned all the, uh, the tools that he has and he could easily put together a couple month run similar to what Marte did last year be a huge boost for this team offensively About the home run production. It's down from where, where he was last season. You get uh, hot with the home run ball. You come up with some uh, definite scenarios and, and scenarios that aren't far fetched at all to where this offense could really do much better than they have to this point. Catch has been hitting the heck out of the ball for quite some time now. The ground ball backhanded by Infante. Second out, Polanco to third. 
want to remind you, tickets purchased now through Wednesday. The Pirates will pay all service fees. This deal includes tickets purchased for the series against the Nationals that starts Thursday night and for select home games in August. So don't miss out on the great promotions, the key divisional matchups, and lots more. For tickets, visit Pirates.com slash no fees. Fees are not being waived. The Pirates are paying all the fees. Pirates.com slash no fees. Hutchin tries to get home that runner from third with two outs. Hits this toward left center field. And there is the shallow left fielder, Gerard Dyson, being burned by McCutcheon. Double 5-1 Pirates. <laughs> Cutchin wanted to really burn him. You see uh, the way he was going from first to second? He was really turning it on. He was thinking about, okay, you're going to play me that cheap. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you. I mean, look at those outfielders. How can they play Kutch that cheap? That's really Amazing. I think, I think Jeff Locke was hitting. <laughs> no, no offense, Jeff. That's just amazing to me. Now, right there, you can see between first and second, he really turned it on. Of course, with two outs, not that big a deal, but if he really wanted to burn him, you can see he could have really busted it from home, but. He gets the RBI double. That's 57 RBIs for McCutcheon. His second hit tonight. Andrew McCutcheon, Burns, Gerard Dyson, and the Royals. I think that kind of surprised McCutcheon. That ball. I think he expected that. Well, that might have been, you know, why he kind of took uh, yeah. took it easy out of the box, thinking, okay, I've I have flown out yeah. the left, right. and then as he took three or four steps, thinking, whoa, wait a minute, where's the left fielder? McCutcheon, before that pitch, had said something to the bench. And I wonder. have to find that out but he, before that pitch he had turned and said something to his dugout interesting he doubles home Polanco makes it five to one nine hits for the Pirates Marte has two of the hits. He chases that one in the dirt. He's thrown out the strikeout. Ends the fourth, but Andrew McCutcheon. The two out double brought home Polanco.
Well, thanks very much, Rob. Uh, the Pirates here have a 5-1 lead. And the batter, Salvador Perez. Andrew McCutcheon, the big two-out double. He has two of the nine Pirate hits. And the ball bounced to Rodriguez. So we're wondering about whether A.J. Burnett might get on a roll, and perhaps he is. Let's go back to the studio for another game break. Rob, thanks. The Nats lead the Mets by two games in the National League East. That's losing the last two games of their series against the Dodgers. Fonte doubled in the second. Ball one strike. Two hits in the first. Two hits in the second. A one, two, three, third. And a couple of strikes. And, and those are strikes that make you really feel good about him getting on a roll where he's locating those pitches. Going to his bread and butter and hitting them. And a roller to gong. Takes care of Infante. Seven straight retired now by A.J. Burnett. Struck out Alex Rios in the second. He's retired eight of the last nine that he's faced. There it is again. He's got his pitch count too in excellent shape. Just 45 now. Came in with the third lowest ERA in the league behind Zach Greinke and Max Scherzer. And that's hit down the line and extra bases for Rios. A two out double. And AJ won't be happy with the location of that one. Or isn't happy, I'm sure. That was a curveball and he left it down and in over the inside part of the plate. Watch this. That's not where he wants to throw that pitch. I'm sure you know after the game he's going to talk about how the first couple innings he just was inconsistent with his location on his pitches. Couple hitters, it'll be right there, and then, then he'll miss for a hitter or two. Then it'll come back. He hit Dyson with a pitch in the second. A fastball that we kind of hooked it inside. Pulled it. Chopper coming in as Walker has no time to waste, and he will not get the out. Apparently didn't have it. Didn't have a good grip on it and does not throw it. So it'll be an infield hit for Dyson. Yeah, he would have had it out if he could have got it uh, out of his glove. You see it on the on the replay. But with Dyson, uh, as fast as he is, it, it only takes just that one little split second to reset your grip and he's going to beat it out. Now will Dyson stay? 12 steals this season for Dyson caught just once. The bigger base stealing threats in baseball. And they pick him off. 
Now I'll be watching that runner at third. Rios breaks for the plate and a late throw by Gong. And everybody's safe. Gong didn't throw it. Well, this is uh, perfect, uh, perfect timing. You take off on the throw to the shortstop. Rios uh, timed it perfectly. There we go. See, as soon as the ball is in the air, you take off. We talked about this in a play the other day when uh, Marte was coming off there. That's when you want to run. As soon as the throw goes out, uh, the other direction. Because now you, now you have a couple of steps while the ball is traveling through the air. And if the shortstop catches it and doesn't turn immediately, you're in trouble. And that's what happened. And now the steal by Dyson. And this is a run here, obviously, is just all legs. Third on the ground ball to the shortstop. And that'll do it. So the legs of the Royals get the run against Burnett. Turn to Pittsburgh Thursday night at PNC Park 705 another military Thursday the Pirates will wear their camo jerseys and caps to honor the American military service men and women plus after the game a special weeknights and belly works fireworks show for tickets go to pirates.com the first of a four game series four game homestand Pirates Nationals 705 and fireworks to follow Bryce Harper and the Nats so the Royals steal a run Alex Rios steals home they have swiped three bags in this ball game. Chung Ho Gung has singled and walked. First steal of home by an opponent of the Pirates, exclusive of a double steal since Jeff Bagwell stole home against the Pirates in August of 2001 down in Houston. It's a little misleading. I yeah, think. it is. Very much so. That essentially is a double yeah. steal. But they don't have it because because the runner went back right. first. A true steal of home without a double steal is when a guy actually just steals home. Strike gone, gone. Seven game hitting streak. And three and one. That might be one of the, the rarest plays in all of baseball, the true steal of home. You know, Jackie Robinson style. Talk about a lost art. There's a liner down the line and left by Gong. He's going to reach base for the third time, and he's got himself a leadoff double. It's the fourth double for the Pirates tonight. And they've collected 10 hits. Are you kind of surprised that Ventura's still out there, Greg? 
I mean, I, 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 I mean, no longer. Well, okay, yeah, Yost is coming up, but it's, you know, I'm, it, he has got some unbelievable stuff. At times, he's looked unhittable, but, but at other they, times, he, he just yeah. has no idea where he's throwing the ball. He's getting in fastball counts, and, and uh, the Pirates are, are just sitting on that fastball, especially somebody like Gong. It, they're going to hit it hard. He walks one, strikes out seven, gives up ten hits, and leaves trailing 5 2. City where the Pirates lead the Royals five to two in the fifth inning. A runner at second base. Ben Ventura back to the dugout. And Edinson Volquez uh, with the Pirates last year signed with the Royals. A pretty good uh, brain to pick, I think, for Ventura. The young right hander. Uh, Volquez been around a long time. At, at one time he had stuff that was uh, a lot like what Ventura is throwing now. Have a little discussion about pitching in and out with that fastball and when to throw that breaking ball and you know, when to put it off the plate, when to throw it for a strike. There's Medlin's numbers with the Braves 2013. Tommy John surgery. Plural, right? And a couple. Oh, really? He's had more than one. Coming back from this one for the first time since 2013. Must feel uh, pretty good for Chris Medlin. Long road back. The guy who won 15 games two years ago with the Atlanta Braves. Signed as a free agent in December 2014. And a couple of strikes. Mellon trying to follow that glove and hit that high target. Trying to get a chase on a fastball up out of the strike zone. Could you imagine trying to rehab from one no. Tommy John surgery, let alone two? And the first man he faces the big leagues. I really can't even imagine what that's, that could be like. Right? Yeah. Even from one, you know, something, thankfully, I never had the experience. Any kind of a rehab. Disappointing at bat. Alvarez strikes be, out. It's got to be so tough and just the mental aspect. And I'm talking about the physical work that you have to do. But, you know, that wondering about will you be better? What will you be like? What's it going to feel like when you. You do get back out on a mound. 
And it, you know, you're talking about a career. Yeah. And there's so much money involved in the game nowadays. It, it just, uh, you know, I, I don't even, can't even imagine what goes through a player's mind and have to endure that. So much ex at stake for them. Tommy John surgery for Chris Medlin it was in August of 2010. So he spent the majority of the 11 season rehabbing from that. And then underwent the second Tommy John surgery March of last year. So he missed all of last season. The Braves. Oh. Strikes out Cervelli looking. Much to Cervelli's surprise. It looked like very much a borderline pitch. We'll see where it is now. I think what made it look so bad initially is where Perez had to catch it because he was sitting it down and away and it was way up and in. So he is reaching way up and out you know, outside his body. To try and catch the ball, so it made it look like it was a lot further out of the strike zone than it was. In fact, it wasn't. Travis Ishikawa doubled in a pair of runs his first time up. Off the wall and left. Young still at second now with two outs. Top bullpens in the major leagues going head to head this series. Pirates and Royals. The Royals, the lowest ERA in the majors. The Pirates second among bullpens. As A.J. Burnett ponders what lies ahead. Mike Moustakis will be leading off the bottom of this inning. Hit well the other way, sending Dyson back toward the wall, and it is gone. Clear the deck for Travis Ishikawa. He says, Sayonara, the other way, and the Pirates take a 7 2 lead. How about the opposite field pop he has shown on this road trip? To, yeah, I was going to say, back to the series in Milwaukee. Yeah, it, it's. It's all right the, the straightaway left field or down that line. He is just trying to drive the ball that way and not trying. He's doing it. His first two at bats yesterday were drives to the wall and left at Miller Park. And here, his second drive the other way tonight is a two run homer. It's his first of the season. And his first since the uh, NLCS walk off. Travis Ishikawa. I hit it where's pitch. Got the ball bell high. On the outside part of the plate. You, you go out and you try and pull that ball. That, that's that one where you roll the hands over and put it on the ground. Rodriguez bounces the third. How about that? Medlin strikes out the first two he faces was feeling good, but then Ishikawa hits the home run.
Pirates Baseball on Root Sports is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Health for all. By Kenny Ross. Ask a neighbor. And by Levin Mattress. Located in all Levin Furniture showrooms and freestanding stores. Let's go Bucks. Well, the Pirates now lead 7-2. Go to the bottom of the fifth inning. And what a... Turn of events here. Travis Ishikawa, it's a two run homer. He's driven in four runs. And things are starting to feel pretty comfortable now. Five run lead. Moustakis leads things off. He singled in the first run in the first inning. And AJ Burnett. Gave up that run last inning, but mainly because of the great speed of the Royals. Nice and able to beat out an infield single, then Rios steals home. Travis Ishikawa, Point Park University tweets on this opposite field power. Of course, this is a guy in Ishikawa who was you know, considered the Giants' top prospect for a time. Some opportunities to, to play in San Francisco for a couple years, but maybe he never met their expectations. He's now 31 years old, bounced around different clubs. Once again, Burnett. Now, this is what you see from him occasionally. Well, he'll plunk a lefty with a curveball. That hook is coming down and in to the left hand hitter, and he just can't get his legs or his feet out of the way in time. And a great shot of the spin of that hook. Just takes the ball down and in right off the right foot. I like any health network super mo showing you that. Lorenzo Cain has popped up and bounced to short. Two and one. Not even now on Lorenzo Kane. For three in the All Star game. As the American League beat the National League in Cincinnati on Tuesday. Missed by much, but it's three and two. Still three and two. The Royals are the toughest team in baseball to strike out. The Kansas City batters have fanned a total of 527 times. By far the fewest in baseball. In fact, the next fewest number of strikeouts 
592 the Boston Red Sox. By comparison, Pirate hitters have fanned 726 times. So even though Burnett has uh, 102 on the year and climbs the all-time charts, only has two tonight. That's understandable. And it's hard hit and a nice backhand play by Walker. They'll turn that into a double play. Ball was hit hard by Kane, handled by Walker. Well, the way Kane runs, you got to have something at least firm to double him up. So that was a good thing that it was hit that hard and uh, turned it into a chicken sandwich. Yeah, chicken play, double play. 4 6 3, Walker to Gong to Ishikawa. Yeah, one, of the, pitch. one of the things too, Greg, when you're, you're comparing teams with strikeout numbers, it pains me to say this, but in the National League, you do have pitchers striking That's out a couple true. of times a game. No question. That you don't have in the American League. It pains you to say that? It pains me to say that, yes. Are well, you admitting something? There's Dale Swain, a former Pirate. Hitting coach of these Royals. One of Rock's very best buddies. Strikeout list. There is AJ Burnett, 34th all time. How far can he climb before his final season is over? He rides off into the sunset. And another hit the other way by Cosmo this time. He realizes not going to gamble. It's a two out single for Hosmer. He's one for three. It'll bring up Kendrys Morales. Shift with nobody there and nobody playing third base. And it's a, a routine ground and ground ball in that spot. The, the ball go through a hole like that. Is the hitter trying to hit the ball the other way because of the ship? You know, thinking, okay, just hit a ground ball. How their hitting style is going to evolve, say, over the next decade with the, all the shifting that goes on. Well, teams have and to. You also want to come out of the I ship. mean, at what point do you decide it, what? what Percentage sways you to the point where you leave that area vacated in a 7 2 game in the fifth inning. Well, ball hit hard to right toward the foul pole, hits the pole, two run homer for Kendrys Morales, and it's 7 4. Well, you know, it's a good question, Greg, because what, what is a, a trailing team trying to do? They're trying to get base runners. Yeah. So they can do just what they did because they're looking for a big strike. Right. So, so I don't know. It, it, here's what has to go into the thinking. And, and now you have an average number of, of how often somebody hits a ball into a certain spot. Uh, replay of the home run. And... What are the variables that can come into play that would change that number? Right. Like, okay, I'm down seven to two. I'm not going to try and hit a five run homer. I'm just going to take a single to the left. So now, with that approach, what would, how, that how would that affect your overall percentage number? And so, do you play? Do you change where you play? I mean, these are all things that 
that I'm sure they talk about all the time down there. Seven four Pirates lead by three over KC going to the sixth, and it's time now for our data strong fan photo of the game. It's brought to you by T-Mobile, and we have seen uh, this photo of the Pirate skipper before, a cover boy of the Sports Illustrated former first round pick, and Kansas City's Clint Hurdle, a phenom. This one is signed, Chris Birch. Thanks for that, data strong fan of the game. Chris Birch that signed SI by Clint Hurdle. Kendrys Morales at a two run homer makes it 7 to 4. Back to the top of the order, and this time Polanco faces Chris Medlin. He was one out of three against the starter, Jordano Ventura. against Burnett aside from the Morales home run a couple of squibbers inside the third base bag the infield hit by Lorenzo Cain and they do have nine hits but really essentially three weak ground balls went for hits and now three and one the count on Polanco And he thought it was ball four. That one definitely looked like it could have been called ball four. Nothing in the strike zone yet. And there, ground ball to the right side. It's fielded by Hosmer on the Medlin. One out of the sixth. Walker 0 for 3. He's fly to left, bounced to short, grounded to second. Oh. Happy birthday wish to David Keene. Watching out of West Virginia. See if the Buccos can get this W tonight. We got Garrett Cole on the hill tomorrow.
the Pirate All-Star. And Stewart will likely be behind the plate. And Charlie Morton will pitch the finale of the series on Wednesday. Wednesday night. The Pirates fly back to Pittsburgh, get ready for the four-game series against the Nationals starting Thursday night. And Walker, a strikeout victim. Three Ks for Medlin. Let's go downstairs to Robbie. Yeah, talking about Charlie Morton, he's going to be our guest tomorrow night. Here from Kauffman Stadium, he's our Twitter Tuesday guest. Send us your questions. Tweet us right now. Use the hashtag Bucks Tuesday. Ask Charlie anything. He's a pretty cerebral guy. Wondering some things about uh, when human beings entered the earth today. Kind of a long discussion before we talked about Twitter Tuesday. And uh, he's an interesting guy, but very honest, very open, and very literal. Charlie will take all your questions tomorrow. Send the hashtag, uh, the question with the hashtag Bucks Tuesday, Greg. He'll be taking uh, your questions on the eve of his start on Wednesday night. Andrew McCutcheon, two for three. Cutch shaking his head no. That was not a strike. How did he know that was a strike? That's a good eye. When they, they come that close, and you can tell. And then you always wonder when a pitch like that is called a strike, and then another pitch like that is thrown, even though it was different area, the other side of the plate. As a hitter, you figure, okay, I've got to now really swing anything close if he's calling those pitches strikes. So we're well, yeah, it offered at that I, I one, would think number so. three. I mean, that, from a pitcher standpoint, that's what you're always hoping. And now for. he's really mad because he didn't want to. It felt like he had to offer at that ball. The 7 4 Pirates. by the authority of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. On the road, traveling, and want to watch your Pirates? Subscribe to MLB.TV Premium for live or on demand on over 400 devices, real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking, and more. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.TV for details. Jay Burnett faces Omar Infante at the bottom of the sixth. Infante doubled in the second and bounced to short his last time up. That falls behind him 2 0. Doesn't like that baseball.
Alex Rios on deck. He doubled last time. Trying to get a W tonight, he'd go to eight and three, and he would match his wins total from last season when he went eight and 18 with the Phillies. Three and two. AJ does get that pitch called, didn't he? Yeah, he does. Not that one. He's just not as sharp with his control as uh, we've seen in most of his other starts. Hit a couple and walked a man, and now faces Alex Rios, who has struck out and doubled. Stole home in the fourth. Cervelli going to talk to him. Once again, now in the National League, former Yankee battery. They know Rios, all those years in the American League for Alex Rios, a 286 career hitter against Burnett. Rios now 34 years old. In the air to right, sending Polanco back. Whirls and fires toward first. And Fonte had gone all the way to second. One out. Well, Polanco knew he'd done that far. Well, somebody in the bullpen who was yelling at him to, to, to get rid of it the first base. Because, I mean, he didn't take any time. It didn't seem to look. That's true. He just caught a turn and, and fired at the first base. And I. I really doubt that he would have taken his eye off the flight of the ball to look and see what the runner was doing. Bounce toward second. There's a flip. There's one. And no throw by Gong. And a speedy Dyson. Now with a 7 to 4 score, will that keep Dyson at first base? One of the things that uh, you, you want to do when you're going up against a team with a lot of speed, try to get a substantial lead, and maybe that'll slow their running game down a little bit. Teams that are very confident uh, in, in their abilities to steal bases, they'll ignore that scoreboard. Say the heck with it, we're going to go anyway. You know, I can see one reason they don't strike out much, Greg. Why is that? Because they're so aggressive swinging the bat at the first pitch. If you don't get the two strikes, you get the ball put in play early every at, every at bat, you're not going to strike out much. Fairly close. That's a good point. They, they are aggressive. A little bit of a flinch towards second. He's still running. Again, oh, Bach is called by Jerry Davis. Uh, you got to be careful. He's going to get thrown out. Somebody's got to get him say, out there. He's going to get thrown out. Cervelli comes sprinting in.
Well, you know, A.J. Burnett has been a model citizen this year. Going back to the two times he had strikeouts in his pre previous you see, two this previous is something you, you're, you're not really allowed to argue about a balk either. They will. They have a very. Uh, Almost surprised they let him go that long, aren't you? Yeah, I am. I, I thought I thought that he would get tossed for walking over there. Just just walking over there, I thought he'd get thrown out. Clint Hurdle has had uh, discussions uh, with, we understand, Joe Torrey about. You see, the ball call. See, the reason I know about this is because I, I had a little bit of a a, a balk move where I would pick guys off, and I would get. And I would always want an explanation as to what I did, and they would, they would not let me talk about it. They wouldn't. They they would say, "Get back on the mound, or you're out of the game." Immediately, they wouldn't even discuss it with you. Uh, I, I know how short-tempered, I guess you could say, that, that they will be if you try to argue a balk call with them. Because I believe sometimes they'll call a balk. They know you did something, but they're not sure what it is, and they don't want to be asked about it. My guess is it's going to be his left knee. See it switch, Greg? No. Can we, can we, can we see, see that this, again? See, see that again? Super slow mo stop action. Watch, so watch. No, just just watch the left knee. You'll see it bend, and that's what the runner is looking at because he knows that the left knee is going to bend for him to lift his leg. Watch the left knee flex. Right there. See that? Did you see it move that time, Greg? Yeah. Now that's what the runner is looking at to. So he knows if the leg is coming up, it's got to bend. So when he sees that leg start to bend, he's going to take off. So Ray Searage coming out to try and settle him down. Now my argument with the umpires always was, well, how do I get my cleats off the ground if I don't start to bend my knee? Right. Good question. I always thought it was a good question, but the answer was get back on the mound. See what I'm saying? And that's why I was surprised that AJ's still out there. And there goes the runner for third. And Dyson steals third with two outs. The ball in the dirt, the block by Cervelli. important for the Pirates to play their middle infielders out where they're supposed to out on the edge of the grass to try and prevent a ground ball base hit than it is to keep Dyson off of third base with two outs. Well, well Cervelli and uh, Burnett there Bur Burnett's not happy with Cervelli Burnett's just uh, not, Burnett's happy not happy with, happy with anybody right no. now. Yeah. And, and I can understand a little bit but I mean he, he, there's been some situations where he's given up a leaf one, maybe two runs tonight, where maybe a little bit better defense uh, he wouldn't have. Certainly, he's had to throw more pitches than he would have otherwise. And I think that ball call just kind of put him over the top. We're talking about the fact that the Pirates having discussions with Joe Torrey about. Umpires giving players more leeway and being aware of situations. They were really upset at uh, Vic Carapaza. That Saturday night game threw out Francisco Cervelli. After the Mark Reynolds home run. Weekly hit to the right side and that will do it. Let's watch uh, A.J. Burnett. See if he's able to. Walk off the mound, not say a word. You never know with AJ. Again, he's been the model citizen so far. And he gets out of it 7 4 Pirates.
J. Burnett back in the dugout. And we take a look back at a game involving the Padres, the, knee. the 6th of July. That was a, a great shot of the knee. Upton saying that was a balk. It was not called one. Melvin Upton. He was picked off and here tonight. Jerry Davis calls it a balk and give a save to Cervelli. Cervelli did a great he job sprinting out there, he? down the line that, to get a get a hold of AJ and keep him in the ball game. Cervelli always the peacemaker. He never never getting in trouble. <laughs> Chuckling there with Todd Tomzik, the head trainer. But it, it's been kind of an odd game because you're right, there have been some some weak ground balls that uh, have led to hits. Here's a Cervelli. Watch Cervelli. He'll watch Burnett walk toward the first base umpire. And then realizes, uh oh, look at that <laughs> dead sprint. Yeah. Gotta get his pitcher. Saved a bunch of wild pitches. I enjoy, I, balls in how the dirt. enjoyable has it been to watch him play? Yeah, this been a lot of fun. He has great energy. Fine job, both the defense, offense. It's been good. Definitely hits his hits. And Starling Marte with a bouncer up the middle. Now, well, Marte. That's his third hit. Do anything on the bases. You know, Marte with it with is dying. Got to be dying to like steal a couple bases right here. After watching what's been going on, he wants to show. So hey, you guys can yeah, steal. Yeah, huh? these guys are fast, but right. I'll show you fast. <laughs> well, this will be interesting because if Medlin, who hasn't been on a big league mound in a while, doesn't have anything better to offer than that. So we'll see. Take take off, you would think. And there is a strike on Gong, who's been on base three times. Stolen bases tonight. Renzo Kane has 18 steals and is third in the American League. Watching his teammates swipe four bases. Oh, two. There he goes and in the dirt and the ball goes all the way back to the on deck circle. Marte is on the dirt. Stolen base for Marte. That's number 18. For Marte, I was probably hoping that there would have been a throw. I don't like it. It's just it's like. How, doesn't show how fast he is when there's no throw. And I'm being kind of, I know I'm kidding around here a little bit, but I am a little bit serious that there are, you know, situations where you know, the other team is doing something that you do well and, and you want to, you want to show, show what you can do. Well, hit toward left center field, Kane. Marte's tagging to make the catch, and, and yeah, Marte takes off and reaches third easily. Yeah. There's Marte right there saying, okay, you're a premier elite center fielder. Here's a fly ball, routine depth in left center, and I'm going to get the third easy. Most guys won't even, most guys will play halfway on that ball, right? How many guys in the league go from second to third on that play? That's, 
I said most guys play halfway. They won't even they won't even go back and tag up, much less actually go. They'll just play halfway and go back to second. Infield in. With Alvarez at the plate. He has struck out his last two times up and a save there by Perez. Had an opposite field single in the second, drove in a run, struck out in the third with men on, and struck out with a mount runner in second and nobody out. And this chopper should bring in a run if it's a fair ball. Oh, is. how about that? For some reason, he picked it up, and it's an RBI. Thank you very much. For ball game, Hosmer decides to pick up that ball, and, and now Medlin's going. What are you doing? How could you not just let that go foul? Medlin decided to let it go foul, yeah. but his first baseman didn't. You know, if it was the score was reversed, then maybe uh, okay, take the out. But how can you give up another run when you're already down three just to get an out? Somebody was yelling, no, no, no. That's why he stopped. And then what is Hosmer doing? I have no idea. That's a gift run. The Pirates. They will certainly take it. Cervelli will be retired. Right hand stinging a bit. Bucks now lead at 8 4. Going to the bottom of the seventh inning. Pirates hosting Youth Baseball and Softball Day is presented by Heinz at PNC Park this season. The final Youth Baseball and Softball Day set for Sunday. The Pirates and Nationals meet at 135. First 1,000 players and coaches to register as a team will participate in a special pregame ceremony on the field this coming Sunday. Tickets start at just $13. You can get yours at pirates.com slash youth baseball and softball. The Pirates and the Nationals concluding that four-game homestand. AJ Burnett trying to get seven innings in. Eight four ball game. As long as the uh, the hitters cooperate, the easily get in seven innings. He's only thrown 84 pitches. Mike Mustakis. I don't want to see him get anybody on first. No more pickoff throws here. Yeah. There's a situation we're talking about. You're up by four runs in the seventh inning, but you go with the overshift because the uh, the numbers, the charts must be 
so overwhelming, even though his but first but inning hit was inside the third base back. But that really doesn't, you know, to me, it's, it, that number is is built as a total of all yeah. all things. I, like, like here's the, the best way to an example to tell you what I'm talking about is let's say that that I'm a pitcher and it says that I throw 80 percent fastballs to left hand hitters when I'm behind in the count. OK. So the, when you're a left hand hitter and you're behind in the count you should look fastball right. Well now let's say they send a pinch hitter a left handed pinch hitter up to the plate guy with some pop in his bat power and it's a tie up ball game in the eighth inning. Well in that scenario I might only throw I might throw change ups when I'm behind an account 50% of the time in that scenario because the guy can tie the game and it's late it's the eighth inning he can win the game with a home run. So that is a is a total different number than what the overall number is because the scenario is different. Drive to right field, and there is a solo home run for Michael Stockus. His ninth. So the, 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 the key, Greg, is to find out who are the players that change and who are the players that don't, that just keep hitting the way they hit. Like in this case, Moustakis looks like he's just going to keep on hitting the way he hits. That's why I was wondering if that base hit the left field earlier. Was it an accident or was it on purpose? To me, the best example would be a guy like, Pe how you defend a guy like Pedro Alvarez. We know Pedro Alvarez. But if I'm defending the Pirates against Pedro Alvarez, he never changes, just like we just saw this. I would not shift in a situation like that. I'd rather see what, what Moustakis just did. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. If, if the number like you're like you're saying if the if we assume that a guy like Moustakis is like Alvarez just assume that there are certain players that I'm sure change right their approach yeah, whether yeah. it's a pitcher or a hitter depending on the score yeah. and that's going to affect you know, where they're going to hit the ball yeah. or what kind of pitches somebody is going to see it's his ninth of the year. And it makes it eight to five. Not Hosmer. I mean, what is he thinking about sitting on deck right now? Thinking, why didn't I let that ball just roll foul? You know, and now they they would be only two runs back instead of three. Nishikawa not able to get there. Very unusual uh, the way this ballpark is built down the uh, the edges of the stands yeah. and foul territory. There are no jutting out areas. The, the, the fans can't reach over and touch a ground ball. You know anything that we have perfect sight lines into the corner because of the way the, the stands are just straight as an arrow, going down all the way into the outfield fence. And a base hit for Lorenzo Kane. He's got a nine-game hitting streak. Pirates have bullpen action going here. Checks with Euclides Rojas. Eric Hosmer. Single to left field his last time up. Joins Jared Hughes. And that's going to be it. It's going to be Bastardo. AJ Burnett will exit after six plus. We'll need the bullpen to do the job.
Eagles have a man on, nobody out. And Eric Hosmer coming to the plate. And it's Antonio Bastardo. 33 games for him. ERA down in the threes. Bastardo pitched two innings on Saturday night. Gave him a home run, a pinch hit homer to Chris Davis in the 8 5 loss to the Brewers. What do we have here? I don't know, something's been going on here at home plate. I've been watching it at Cervelli. You know, got into a little bit of a discussion. Is it something with Bastardo? Somebody might be hurt. Yeah, they're, they're, they're calling out uh, Ben Potenziano to check on Bastardo, it looks like. Or, or Cervelli. Cervelli. You remember that we mentioned he was on that ground out. He was flexing that right hand. And he was in so much pain he barely got to first base. At the top of the seventh inning. I think he's coming out of the game. Didn't he have problems a few uh, a couple weeks back about getting dizzy? Was it was, was it Cervelli? That it was a late scratch. Remember, he came. He uh, was in the original lineup. Yeah. Because he was having some uh, dizzy spells before the game. I started just. Uh, Rodriguez and Stewart throwing the ball around to warm up Stewart and the ball got past Stewart. So the Chris Stewart has to come in again, relieve Cervelli as he did that weekend series we we're talking about with the Cardinals after Cervelli was ejected. You know, I remember Cervelli talking. Uh, I can't remember which trainer it was now. After he ran down to see AJ. Yes, it was Todd Thompson. I wonder if there was something wrong with him then. Well, as I said, after that he got jammed on that last pitch, that ground out. He was shaking that right hand and barely got to first base. And now Hosmer. Who has reached on an air, struck out in single. Osmer hitting 266 against left handed pitching this season with three of his homers against Southpaws. And that's line down the line in right field. Polanco has trouble with it, so Hosmer's going to wind up at third, and it's eight to six. You know, Greg, that I just had a flashback, a memory of a long time ago, a meeting in the clubhouse during the World Series back in 80. They were talking to the outfielders about this scenario because of the curved wall that you've got to immediately go to the fence and trap the ball because it's going to come off that wall and roll along. Now, it, when it was AstroTurf, it would roll even further. But that's what happened here. The ball comes off that curved wall just past the foul pole and just starts running along the, the back edge of the warning track. And what should be a double gets turned into a triple. And if Hosmer would let that ball go foul, I hate to keep talking about yeah. it, but I mean that that was a an unbelievable no-no on his part. He'd be the uh, be the tying run right now at third base. Big swing from Kendris Morales.
But that is a really a, a little bit of a nuance here at this ballpark. The outfielders have to be really aware of those curved walls just past the foul poles. Broken bat bouncer going to score a run. And it's eight to seven. Andres Morales with a two run homer. An RBI ground out has 65 RBIs this season. Clint Hurdle going to the right hander now. Jerry Hughes will be coming on. Three runs in the seventh. Nostardo retires one of the two. And now it's Jared Hughes. On his way to first base after making the last out in the top of the seventh inning. Cervelli has had issues with that right hand recently while catching. It was significant that he had a batting glove on. Normally yeah. he doesn't wear batting right. gloves on that hand. So you know it was messed up anyway. Took a hit on that hand uh, just a couple of days ago. A foul tip. Smoked it. Uh, look, you're right, Greg. I think that's the issue that uh, bothering him. Jared Hughes now faces Salvador Perez. It's a one run ball game. Hughes threw a lot of pitches yesterday, faced five batters, gave up three hits and three unearned runs. And a ground ball just off of Rodriguez's glove and a base hit for Perez. His second hit. Just keep coming. Will not back off. It's such a different game than we've normally played this year. We haven't been involved in too many uh, slugging matches. Well, the pitching has been so good, and here you have two clubs with just the outstanding pitching, kind of like when we're playing St. Louis. And you're thinking, okay, it's going to be close games. They're going to be two to one, three to two, something like that. Bounce it to Gong. He'll keep it himself for the double play. Three runs in, one run game. And this is the first of three against the defending American League champs.
And then they scored two more, now eight to seven. As we go to the eighth inning. Nissan Road ahead, Garrett Cole against Jason Vargas will come off the disabled list to make the start against the 13 game winner, Garrett Cole. And then it's a Wednesday night small game featuring Charlie Morton against former Pirate Edinson Volquez. Two more to go here in Kansas City. Well, Edson having a, another solid year with that 328 ERA and eight wins. Two starters for the next couple of nights. Cole and Morton. Chris Medlin back in the big leagues. Ready to work his fourth inning. He has struck out four batters. He's given up two hits, including a Travis Ishikawa home run in the fifth. Ishikawa with four ribbies. Rips that one foul. Look out over there. Volquez. Good guy. His, his career really rebounded last year. The Pirates. And signed as a free agent. These Kansas City Royals. Really, he replaced James Shields. Shields went to the Padres. But it had some bulk as 13 game winner last year in ERA, ERA just over three. Chicago's four RBIs, the most he's had in a big league game since October of 2012. This is hard but foul. Chicago now the age of 31. After being drafted in the 21st round by the Giants back in 2002. Hits this one hard to the right center field gap. And this is going to get down and go to the wall. What a night for Travis Ishikawa. Well, speaking of the Giants, Ishikawa has reminded me of Will Clark the way he's hitting the ball tonight. Just lashing shots all over this place. Wow. Locked in as he looked. A short swing. Hit night for Ishikawa. Into the right center gap. He's doubled off the wall and left, driving in a pair. He's homered over the left field wall. Two run homer, and here to the right center gap. And a leadoff double at that. He's two for two against Medlin. Now Rodriguez needs to get Ishikawa to third. No matter of how he does it. And he'll be asked to bunt. And bunts it foul. Sean Rodriguez hitless in his last 12 at bats. Shot left at him. That's really gonna let him swing. Looks like the Royals think he's still butting up. They're gonna stay in tight. Just get word that Francisco Cervelli removed with. Discomfort in his right wrist. Will be treated and evaluated. Well, he is still funny. Got it down. 
The throw to third and I get the out there. Well, that is so tough to get the out of third base on a uh, on a tag play. Great job by Medlin. Now, this is pretty automatic when the uh, the punt is this close to the mound on a on a force play, but when it's a tag play to be able to get over there, it's got to be a very accurate throw so that the third baseman doesn't have to reach anywhere, catch the ball, and put a tag down. And Medlin did a great job putting it right there. Now Polanco. Tony Watson starts to loosen in the Pirates bullpen. Bucks would love to get another run or two. That would have been great to have the infield in right now. Runner at third base. One for four tonight. Polanco doubled in the fourth. His knee broke also. Three and oh on Polanco. Let's see. Watch, watch his knee. Yeah. See, yeah. wiggle it. Yeah, yep. No block there. Well, there was a, I've never ever been called for a balk when the runner got back. It's only when you pick them off you get called for a balk. If if the runner if the runner will uh, have like a big flinch towards second base and get picked yeah. off, that's when you get the yeah. balk the balk call. Three and one. Luke Hochaber works in the Royals bullpen. The Pirates. To end the uh, three game skid after being swept by Milwaukee. The Cardinals are off tonight, so the Pirates can gain only a half game. They would move to within four with a win tonight. The Cardinals will play the White Sox tomorrow. Three and two. Will he be coming on with just the one run lead? A big pitch coming here to Polanco. There goes Rodriguez, and it's popped up. A shallow left. Rodriguez keeps going. And it's a great move by Rodriguez. He figured by then, forget it. And he ends up at third base. Rather than stop and go back, he kept going. Well, he's gonna get, if it's caught, he's going to get doubled off anyway. So, how many times do you see guys not do what he did? Yeah. See Rodriguez there. Right now he figures that it's too late to head back, so go ahead and get yourself to third. Why stop at second? So it's first and third as Dyson. Makes the diving attempt a two-hit night for Polanco. 
Luke Coachaver is coming on now for Kansas City. Baseball, but the Pirates and the Royals have combined for 27 hits, 15 runs. Bucks lead by one. Now try and scratch out another against Luke Hochaver. Hochaver's a hard thrower. They're, uh, they would like a double play, but they would also be looking maybe for a strikeout in this situation. He has 22 of them, 20 innings. Another guy coming back from Tommy John surgery. Last all of last year. Walker needs a hit to extend the streak. He's 0 for 4. Nine game hitting streak coming into this one. Rips this one fair down the line in right field. Rodriguez scores. Polanco is going to be waved home by Sofield. Here comes the throw to the plate. He scores. Walker into third. What a huge hit by the real deal, Neil Walker. I think they tried to, to throw a, a, a cutter to him and just threw it right down the middle, right? Right. Split the plate in half. If that's what the pitch was, that they probably wanted to try and then jam him with it a little bit. Watch the location of this. Just center cut. And Walker just rips it right down the line. Driving in a pair. Polanco scoring with ease. Yeah, those long legs have really took him quickly around the bases. Walker taking advantage of that throw going all the way home and getting himself all the way to third base with just one out. That's huge. And now McCutcheon. Walker's two-run double gives him a 10-game hitting streak. 36 RBIs and a 10-7 Pirates lead now. The infield in on the grass with McCutcheon hitting because Walker was able to go all the way to third. That's a triple for Walker. And a strike three call. Three strikeouts for Cutch tonight. This one coming at a, at a bad time with the infield in. With two outs. Darling. 
Marte has three hits. Shaver. And Chopper. Marte's got the great speed. On the first bang bang play, they just did get him. Neil Walker, the big hit. Pirates lead 10 7. Tomorrow night, our coverage starts tomorrow at 7.30 with Pirates pregame. Presented by W.B. Mason on Root Sports. The 10-7 Pirates going to the bottom of the eighth inning. Neil Walker, the official score, gives him a triple. His first triple of the year and two more RBIs and of course now a 10 game hitting streak. Well, Tony Watson uh, coming on with a little bit of a cushion now thanks to Neil Walker. strike you mentioned earlier Greg that some people are talking this could possibly be a preview of a World Series matchup between these two teams right this would have been a very interesting World Series yeah, game, game one right all the stuff going on three hundred career appearance Sixth left hander in Pirates history with 300 appearances. The others, Grant Jackson? Uh, no, Wilbur Cooper. Okay, oh yeah, I forgot about Wilbur. Oh, Wilbur. John Grabo. Really? Second on the list. John Candelaria, Scott Sauerbeck, and Bob Beal. A couple recent guys. Grable and Sarva now. Yeah. What a foul. Oh, 
Dyson. He's been hit by a pitch, reached on an infield single, and bounced into a fielder's choice. The Twins by six games in the American League Central. Twins off tonight. As we mentioned earlier, the Cardinals also off. Reds beat the Cubs five to four. Tony Watson, who made his major league debut with the Pirates June 8, 2011. Strikes. Watson makes his first appearance since the All Star break. Ned Yost led the Royals to the World Series last year after winning the wild card game. There's a strikeout for Tony Watson. Longtime uh, Brewer skipper. Yost. Of course, his American League won the All Star game. Talk about a potential World Series preview. The Royals, if they were to reach, would have a home field advantage thanks to that victory. I'll see this Escobar, one for four. No strikes. Watson worked the final game of that series against the Cardinals a week ago yesterday. It certainly would be nice to win a ball game against uh, the defending. American League champions in their home yard with their 30 and 16. Winners of eight of their last 10. Well, it would but be nice to win a game like this with all the runs scored. Uh, yeah, match. That, and especially after you lose Mercer yesterday, and uh, what you talked about, kind of putting behind the bad series, bad yeah, taste. For, forgetting about. Both the good and the bad. Yeah. The, the St. Louis series, the Brewer series, are both long done with now, and it doesn't make any difference. This is what's most important. These are the games that are you have some power over. And fingers crossed that the Cervelli injury is not all that severe. And a base hit to right. With two outs, Escobar goes the other way. He has two hits. Batting 294. Stock has homered off Burnett in the seventh inning. Some serious catching on that one. This ball just placed right up and in on his hands. Might as well threw a saw blade up there. Watch this. Look at the 
folks behind the plate. They had their eyes on the ball. And they heard the noise. Barrel of the bat winds up the backstop. 0 and 1 on Mustakis. On base three times in this game. Tony trying to get back in there and get another bat. For Mustakis and 36 RBIs. And he's set up for the. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. no I says he's got him set up now for that breaking ball away. He's done it three times in a row. And on this last one, Mustakis able to get the head of the bat out there and pull the ball foul. What are they going to do? Well, they're going to go back and they're going to try and quadruple up inside. Dangerous pitch. Got a piece of him. You know what? I, I, what I meant right there. Why not go away with the breaking ball on that pitch right, right there after he he finally got out and pulled the fastball in. Just nick the shirt. Hottest hitter in Lorenzo Kane. Yeah. Fly ball to left. Marte puts it away. And a scoreless eight for Tony Watson. Lorenzo Kane. Lies to left. I don't recall. No. That's unbelievable, Rob. No, I, Save I, that video. I saw that video. I thought that was from like a few years back yeah. or something. Old fashioned. But, I mean, you could obviously see, though, that the catcher was not blocking the play. Yeah. Had plenty of time. He could have slid. Uh, didn't have to run it. Up. Well, no, I guess he was blocking the play. But I think the rule, though, is that you can you can block the plate see, if you have the ball. There's the. But. Okay. I mean, I'd have to see the. Again, it looked like before he had oh. the ball. He that blocked. he was straddling the foul oh, okay. line. But, but, but briefly, the key but. to the whole thing is when you said I think. That's the problem with that rule. Nobody knows what it means. That's true. That's a good, good call on your part. Chung Ho Gong at the plate. And 
Young has been on base three times. Here's another look. Uh, it looked like he he was standing in the same place after he caught the ball that he was standing before he caught the ball. Well, his knee just bent just a bit. Oh, should have called a balk on him. Man. <laughs> That's why I said that. One and two, the count. I mean, to me, he didn't catch the ball and then move over in front of the plate. But it doesn't matter. Like I said, who knows what the rule means? I'm just glad that it's been a long time since we saw a nice baseball play. An old fashioned play. baseball play at the yeah. plate, yeah. Good to see. And uh, thought that was going to be a uh, dinosaur. Yeah. One ball, two strikes. Shortstop Escobar. The uh, first out in the ninth, the last out in the bottom of the eighth, Lorenzo Kane against Tony Watson. Watch Lorenzo Kane think this is gone. A little bat flip, and then realizes, whoops, it's a fly ball to left. Where would that have been gone? Have gone from Houston, maybe? Houston, I think, yes. I mean, that didn't even come close to the warning track. Well, I think Houston, yeah. Maybe Houston. Maybe. Been, right, maybe. maybe Fenway. They're the only two places yeah, that would have had a yeah. chance. Yeah. Certainly Mercer Red that one. Thank goodness. <laughs> that would have tied the game if he was right. Alvarez has his second hit. A one out single to center. Two hit night for Pedro Alvarez. The Pirates. 16 hits. Second off Luke Hochaver. Now Chris Stewart will get his first at bat. Came on for the injured Cervelli. Star Mark Melanson. At this point, it is a safe situation. Two and oh, the count on Stewart. Stewart. Has himself a seven game hitting streak. Long look down third that time. Now you're in a uh, hit and run count. Two and one. Perhaps this time he saw something. Sign. Nope. Nothing on it. Ochaver, the third pitcher to work for the Royals in this ball game. Travis Ishikawa has three hits. Two doubles and a home run. Bounced. 
past the shortstop Escobar. Stewart extends his career high hitting streak to eight games. Got it just far enough up the middle. Travis Ishikawa. Three extra base hits. First time he's done that in his career. How about one more big hit from him? I'll take Lanson out of the save opportunity, but I feel more comfortable. It'll be great for Ishikawa. Just such a big ballpark, it, it looks like the outfield is playing incredibly shallow. I mean, all night long, it's like they're right in about four steps closer than it feels like they normally would be, or a normal outfield would play. But it is a big ball, it's 387 to left, 410 to center, and 387 to right. Spacious. Two and one. No chipper came on it. Gave up the triple to Walker that scored two. Those runs charged to Medlin. Medlin gave up four and three in the third. And after one out, gives up back to back singles to Alvarez and Stewart. And now falls behind. Ishikawa, three and one. Two strikes, two on, one out. Sean Rodriguez will be next. And he gets Ishikawa. Pretty good pitch to hit, 95, but it was pretty much right down the middle. Rodriguez 0 for 4. Yeah, this would be the big hit, Greg. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this would make Sean feel a little bit better. He hasn't you know, hit well for a couple of days now. Be, uh, real big for him to knock in at the insurance run here. And a fly ball. Back goes Dyson and makes a fine catch. Rodriguez lines out. Dyson goes back to get it. So it is a safe situation. For Mark the Shark. Trying to beat the Royals. Dyson goes back to get the Rodriguez line drive.
Great shots from the Allegheny Health Network. Super Mo from Kansas City. Pirates Royals. Buckos are 10 and 5 this year against the American League. The Royals 9 and 4 against the National League. And Mark Melanson will try and nail down his 100th career save. Right, this will be a great one to get the way this game has gone. Just uh, there was no point where you really felt like he could uh, re relax no matter what the score got to be. Get this one over with, get it in the book, number 100 for the shark. Eric Cosmer. Two hits his last two times up. With a single to left and a triple to right. of not having to be real super fine with his pitches with his three running lead. He's still going to be trying to hit corners, but it's not as crucial. If he's starting to fall behind, he can go for a bigger piece of the plate. Strike. Two and two. Eric Hosmer. Fight off that little pet fastball inside. Like Redbeard department a little bit. So a little rally cup cap. And now it's three and two. Like Stewart tried to pull that curveball down just a little bit, couldn't quite hang on to it. Lanson struck out Brett Gardner and Russell Martin in the All Star game, then gave up a home run to Brian Dozier, and he walks Hosmer to start the bottom of the ninth. has walked seven unintentionally all year in 43 innings of work. Andres Morales. Home run in the fifth inning. Off of Burnett. He's ground out in the seventh inning. Brought in a run. Sellout crowd 38,169. By the lack of velocity on that one, way out in front of it. One 
one and two. I can throw the same pitch. Good duplicated. Tied for third in the American League in RBIs. Three more tonight. Henry's Morales. When you have such an effective designator hitter, it's big for the uh, Royals if they do get to that World Series having home field. Two and two. Two on Kendrys Morales. Bounces it. There's one. And there is two. That is a five, six, three double play. Four times Morales has hit the ball to Sean Rodriguez over on that side. Two outs. That's a beautiful pitch. Watch this little cutter kind of come in on Morales' hands and right on the label of the bat. Really simple, easy double play. So he's one out away from his major league leading 30th save. Here's Salvador Perez. All one. Two balls, no strikes. Has converted a club record 27 straight save chances. Two hit night for Perez. Two of the 14 hits for the Royals. Pirates with 17 hits. Foul back out of play. Now the Royals are down to their final strike. Then goes the manager on your left, Dale Swaim. His hitting coach next to him. Lost many in this ballpark this season. Mm -hmm. Used to watching this one strike away from an L here at the uh, at the K. Most recent homestand, they won eight of ten. Pirates have out hit them 17-14. the Jolly Roger in Kansas City. Mark Melanson, 30th save of the year, 100th of his career, and A.J. Burnett wins his eighth game thanks to the offense. Now, certainly a different style game than we've been used to seeing this year. Oh, we've seen the, uh, the close games that have been uh, 
dominated by pitching early on from both sides especially when you're playing a team like Kansas City with the uh, the pedigree of their pitching staff. But it was not like that it was not a game we expected. We didn't think we'd uh, look up and see a 10 7 score and the hits at 17 14. But uh, that's what it is and it's, it's got to be I think uh, really satisfying rewarding whatever you want to be on that pirate side and and see hey we can uh, we can go toe to toe and and uh, beat somebody in a slugfest and make everyone feel a little bit better about uh, you know, overcoming uh, the all the injury problems that we've been yeah. talking about uh, over the last 24 hours. What sweep. Yeah. It's gone. It's meaningless. We're gone but we'll be back. And, and what. I'll just go ahead. Say, no, no. And, and this game does not help tomorrow. That's right. It's the same way. Just That's right. Start all over. Now let's send it back to Pittsburgh. Robin Ken.